Thanks, Ashley, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Ash said, I'm Chris Cumming. I'm CEO of the Goulburn Broken Catchment Management Authority, and I'm really pleased that you've joined our introductory webinar today. First up, though, I want to acknowledge the traditional lands that we're all variously calling from today and pay my respects to elders and traditional owners past and present. So today, we're talking about the Golden Broken Regional Catchment Strategy, a strategy to improve and protect the catchment's natural resources, so water, land, biodiversity. Um, the Regional Catchment Strategy is renewed every six years, and while the GB and GBCMA is responsible for overseeing the renewal, um, and implementation of the RCS, or, or partly um, part of the implementation of the RCS, it is a strate strategic document for all in the catchment. The Golden Broken RCS is a strategy based on resilience principles. So it aims to build the resilience of the catchment's people, land, biodiversity and water resources in a changing environment. And when we talk about resilience, we talk about the capacity of the catchment's people and environment to absorb a shock or a setback and to flourish in spite of it. It's the capacity to cope with change and to continue to evolve in positive ways. Some of you might recall that early in this renewal process, we ran a series of resilience webinars, um, and this was sort of to introduce and build catchment literacy around resilience. And we introduced topics like um, complexity perspectives, governing for change, tipping points, adaptation and transformation. And these concepts are woven through our insights paper and the conversations we're having and they're going to underpin our RCS. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the catchment strategy is a document for all of us. It guides the actions of many organisations, groups and individuals contributing to NRM in the catchment. Um, and as such, it's really important it's actually relevant and it's meaningful and it's useful for everyone. And that's the reason we've always put a lot of effort into ensuring that it reflects the current state of catchment, its communities and the aspirations of everyone. Which is why I'm pleased so many of you have dialed in today and are also joining in the conversations that we're having around the catchment. For me, this is actually the really interesting and critical stage in this process. This talking with you, with stakeholders, with community, through um, what we're calling a thousand and one catchment conversations, um, to garner to your input and to talk through the pros and cons of various actions, is actually when we're really getting to the number of, of um, you know, informing the, the catchment strategy. And these conversations are hard, it's complex issues. And so to help with the conversations, we've produced an insights paper, and I'm not sure if you've all had a chance to see it, but um, this is the insights paper. And this paper captures information on the current state of play and emerging trends um, in natural resource management in the Golden Broken catchment. And it includes in it things like social and economic trends influencing the catchment community major drivers of change, condition of our land, biodiversity and water resources, some sustainability dilemmas facing our natural resources, and questions about how can we adapt or transform in the face of inevitable change. This paper has been informed by new research, by held knowledge, and by many interesting conversations and feedback. And I thank those of you that have already contributed to, to this to the work so far. The, the regional insights paper isn't meant to be right or wrong. It, it doesn't capture everything. It's not precious in itself. Um, and we, although we do think it's, bit, it's quite a nifty capture of a lot of information, um, it's meant to be a conversation starter. And um, we're hoping that you'll find something or many things within the paper that, that pique your interest, engage you in conversations, create ideas, observations, um, and we're wanting to hear about them all. Um, and while it is full of content, I think you'll find it's fairly easy to navigate. Um, we try to make it really clear. We've got each section has the purpose clearly outlined and, and a couple of quick key questions within it that, that hopefully will provoke those conversations and, and um, bring out those ideas. So 
the conversations we're having now are um, lots of <laughs> lots of beeping. <laughs> That's good. Um, the conversations we're having now are an essential part of forming the RCS. Down the track, we'll be having conversations about implementing the RCS and how we can all entwine it within our sort of individual strategies and work programs. And, and later on, we'll also be talking about action pledges that help achieve the overall desired state of the catchment. I I'm, know that the maturity of relationships in the Goulburn Broken catchment, the trust and understanding developed over many years is going to hold us in good stead as we work through these stages and generate and build on all the ideas. So thanks for dialing in today. Um, and I'm now going to throw back to Ashley to describe a bit more about the insights paper, the process and the strategy. Thanks, Chris. So I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, sorry, it's always you get all prepared and then you get awkward <laughs> stage fright during this bit. <laughs> but um, I'll just bring it up now. Oh, and then. So um, touched on, um, I guess why we're giving you a bit of a taste tester of the insights paper today is to, to hopefully get you interested to read more and provide with provide us with some feedback or give us a call for a chat. Um, so it really came about, we were keen to um, stimulate a conversation in the catchment with all our partners and key stakeholders or anyone interested really from can be in the catchment and outside in natural resource management. It provides key insights from the background information gathering we've done, including a review of the previous strategy, socioeconomic analysis, engagement with advisory groups. Um, over 200 people were engaged through that process early on and the catchment condition reporting that we do annually with partners um, in the Golden Broken. So we're kind of trying to create that shared understanding point of conversation amongst everyone and then get your ideas and feedback for the RCS renewal. Um, so as Chris mentioned, it won't be perfect. Um, we're keen to get your feedback around what's missing, things that don't really align or feel right um, with your own experiences or local area and where we might be able to improve things or um, yeah, information or insights you have. So don't feel like you've got to, um, if you're sharing this insights paper with your contacts or networks, don't feel like you need to defend any of the content. It's definitely there to be discussed and um, challenged. Um, so it's not precious at all. Um, we'd prefer to do that at this stage rather than, um, obviously we'll be looking for comments on the draft strategy, but we thought we want to have those conversations early in the process. Um, and as Chris mentioned, we did use a resilience systems framework to guide, well, it's guiding us in the renewal process and also the content of the insights paper. So you'll find throughout the paper, we've included some information on how we've used a resilience approach and how we can all um, use resilience principles to think about change and also what kind of actions we should take. I've just on the slides, we'll send them out after um, today's webinar, but there's a lot of resources if you're interested um, at wayfinder.earth, a global resource that you can use to help guide resilience thinking in strategic planning. So I'm now just gonna go through um, a couple of sections we've picked out, I guess, from the insights paper to give you a bit of a taste for wh why we, like the purpose of those sections and where we got the info from. So one of the key sections early in the insights paper focuses on community values and perspectives. So um, as Chris mentioned, this is a strategy for all involved in NRM in the catchment. Um, so it's really important that we look, consider the diverse range of perspectives um, and experiences. So we've identified sh eight shared values from discussions with um, the 200 people we engaged early, these included traditional owners, farmers, land care volunteers, scientists, government. The key themes that came out of these shared values are diversity, beautiful landscape, opportunities for business, culture and lifestyle. So understanding these values and perspectives is important as for many of the 
I'm sure all of you know, looking at the list of where you're all from, but most of the challenges we face require collective action. So we really need to be um, on a similar page or identify where we have common values and can work together. We've also identified areas where there's conflict between different perspectives and values in the insights paper. I'll talk about those um, in a little bit, but we've called those sustainability dilemmas. So these are where, yeah, our perspectives or values don't line up um, and we face some challenges, um, but I'll touch on those later. But these are the shared um, community values. Another key section um, and way of thinking um, from a resilience perspective is around drivers of change. So we, these drivers are the external forces influencing how the catchment operates and therefore shaping what's possible, so future pathways. We've identified in the paper the global driver of climate change, which is shown in um, purple here in the centre, which then influences all the national drivers, which are in orange, the orange circles. Um, for example, water as a tradable commodity, transition to services, economy, ageing population. So as well as um, these major drivers, we've also listed in the paper some of the more unanticipated shocks um, to the system that can also occur, such as bushfire, bushfires, floods, COVID-19. Um, so they often have a really significant impact in the catchment, but are often over a shorter, more intense period of time. Although I'm sure for all of us, we're feeling like COVID-19 is <laughs> extending into a longer time. Um, so we're keen to get your ideas on how, um, yeah, what you think about these drivers, how they're impacting your work or local area and how we might address them um, in the RCS. So since 2013, when the last RCS was released, the catchment has experienced significant change in response to some of those drivers I mentioned and other um, impacts. So the four, I guess, key trends were highlighted in our um, engagement that have occurred catchment wide. So agriculture is changing, uh, biodiversity is under pressure, water issues are more prominent and complex, and the urban population growth and land use is changing rapidly in parts of the catchment. So we've described each of these trends in detail on page 12 um, of the insights paper. We're keen to get your input on how we can respond to these trends and drivers, as I mentioned um, just before. Um, so then we can include actions that directly target them in the RCS. And also if you do have, um, I guess we're, trying to talk at a catchment wide level um, for the RCS, but we also have some info, which I'll highlight in a second at a more local scale. Um, so keen to get your insights um, from both your more localized perspective, but then at a catchment wide scale as well. So as well as the drivers and trends, um, We've also looked at what they have meant for each of the themes of land, biodiversity, water and community. So we've pulled together info from our annual monitoring um, that we do with partners around catchment condition, as well as learnings from on ground projects. For each of the themes, we've provided a snapshot of the current catchment condition, trends since 2013, the resilience phase or the type of change required to meet NRM goals, and the long-term risk given the current level of support or resources available. So I won't go into it now, but just, I guess, pointing out um, another section that we've put together. So as part of our background information gathering, we've, we contracted Natural Decisions and Neil Barr with Northeast CMA um, to conduct a socioeconomic analysis of the catchment. We felt we had a good knowledge and experience in the environmental changes, but wanted to better understand the social and economic trends. This more detailed understanding helps us identify potential challenges and opportunities, and also design our projects um, to better target community engagement and what's the more localized changes that are happening to communities and, um, I guess at a regional level, um, the trends that are happening. So 
Neil uh, analysed the ABS census data for 2016 and produced a detailed report which is also available on our website and might be of interest to your own organisations and groups in your planning. Um, I've put the link directly to the web page um, in the chat. So today I was just, we're trying to pick and choose our favourite parts, I guess, of the insights paper to show you today. Um, so I've just got um, one map here, which we've created from the data that Neil produced. So it's showing you differences within the rural population of the catchment. So this isn't the town populations, but the rural population. And each coloured area in the map, or it looks like a bit like a jigsaw, <laughs> um, is showing a cluster of the rural population that differs by one or two or three socioeconomic indicators. So these can be things like age, education, employment, culture or growth. And this is compared to state averages. These areas are different to the state average rather than just within the Golden Broken catchment. So they're quite significantly different, um, I guess is what I'd say. Um, so this is the type of information we've pulled together that helps us um, I guess yeah, from our early engagement, we had the vibe that some things had changed or are different in um, different parts of the catchment. But this information just helps, I guess, provide more context and detail about what is different and what is going on. So keen to, um, once you've had a read of the insights paper and maybe even the more detailed report from Niels, um, to get your ideas of what this means for natural resource management, we've put some of our thinking in the insights paper, but keen for your feedback as well. So as I mentioned earlier, another section of the insights paper refers to the sustainability dilemmas, which are the local expression of the NRM challenges we're facing. So they often arise um, where we've got those differences between values and aspirations of um, different stakeholders and how we prioritise to deal with the social, economic and environmental interests. So we've identified five dilemmas that are catchment wide um, and they're around the themes of land use, water, nature, community and agriculture. Um, I'm going to go through the nature dilemma in a second just to give you a bit of a feel for what I'm talking about. Um, I guess this is where we, we've put two discussion questions um, or broad discussion questions in the insights paper and um, in the online survey to get your feedback. And one of those is around um, what actions we should take to address these dilemmas um, and other things we can do to resolve them, or is it more about softening their impacts um, on our natural resources? So the nature sustainability dilemma is around the need for nature um, for the ecosystem services it provides to people. So clean air, water, um, that kind of thing. Um, at the same time, the resilience, extent and diversity of biodiversity is decreasing across the catchment, despite the work, the great works people have been doing, it's still declining in the catchment. And at the same time, we've got the community, um, which you'll read in the report, um, more than 75% of the catchment population lives in urban areas or towns increasingly value nature for amenity, recreation and tourism. So that places um, other pressures on our biodiversity resources. So what this means, so each dilemma, we've sort of described what the dilemma is or the issue, and then what this means for NRM. So for this one, we see a bit of an opportunity where we could engage with a broader group to achieve our goals. These people may come from outside the catchment, might be visitors here for fishing or hunting, that sort of thing. And they may not have traditionally been involved in NRM. So there might be um, opportunity for more one-off experiences such as tree planting or weed and rubbish removal to kind of balance out the impacts of this um, recreation tourism uses. So that's just an example, I guess, of one of the dilemmas, um, which if we, I don't know how I'm going for time, we might have a bit of a chat about later. Um, so when you're thinking about talking about the insights paper with some of your colleagues um, or contacts, um, this rather than if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, I, there's so much content in the insights paper, maybe just pick out one of the dilemmas that's most relevant and have a chat about that. Um, yeah, we don't expect everyone to go through all the sections, just the parts that interest you most. 
Um, so um, this is my second last slide. So in the um, later sections of the insights paper, we've put it together our framework for thinking about change and building resilience that we'll be using to guide the RCS and priority actions. So I guess it's a way to think about change in our response to the dilemmas um, and what kind of change we need. So in resilience thinking, there's four um, different types of change. So persist is the capacity to stay essentially the same in the face of change. And this might be the preferred strategy for protecting say a specific patch of bush or a native species. Adapt is the capacity to deliberately adapt to change the purpose of the system will remain the same while the management changes. So for example, a grain grower might adopt management practices such as stubble retention to increase ground cover and improve soil health, but it, while their management has changed, they're still crop producers. Adapt while preparing to transform is where um, you're deliberately um, adapting to change, but also preparing or building capacity to fundamentally transform your system. So you may be adapting your farm management system or practices, but at the same time, you're preparing to transform the type of agricultural enterprise you run. So you might be um, changing, planning to change from dairy to cropping, uh, for example. So I guess that's the in-between step. Um, transform is where the capacity to, um, this is the capacity to fundamentally transform in response to change. So not just the management, but the overall purpose of the system will change. So example um, that we've been seeing across the catchment in some areas is change from agriculture to lifestyle properties or solar farms is an example of transformation. So not one of um, these responses is better than another. We need a mix of all of them to deal with the breadth of issues across the catchment. And sometimes the timing's not right for transformation, say. Um, however, we're keen through the RCS process to identify the type of change um, required to meet some of these challenges, because that helps um, significantly when we're seeking support from others and accessing resources, and can also give us a bit of a eye of where we're heading and look for those opportunities. So we've included some examples um, in the insights paper. These are just have just come out through some of our early conversations. Nothing, um, we're not necessarily going to put them in the draft RCS, but we just wanted to get you thinking about the different types of change and the, I guess the different futures you could see for the catchment. Um, so keen to get your feedback on, um, like if you're thinking about one of the dilemmas and coming up with some ideas on um, how we could address it, what kind of change do we need to make? So this is my last slide. Um, so this is just um, the next steps, I guess. Um, firstly, we'd love for you to read the insights paper um, and provide your feedback via our online survey. We've got two main discussion questions um, to keep in the back of your mind when you're reading it. So the first is around your reflections from reading the paper. That's um, any of that feedback, what's missing, what surprised you, what's not quite right, that kind of thing or you can even tell us what is <laughs> right as well. That would be good. <laughs> um, the other question is around uh, what's next, I guess. Um, what do you think should be the big picture goals for NRM in the catchment? And what priority actions should we um, take to address the dilemmas? So I guess if this strategy is truly to be um, for all partners and stakeholders involved in NRM, we really need to understand what you think the goals should be and the actions. And then um, we've outlined in the insights paper process that we're gonna um, use with resilience principles to once we've got everyone's ideas in, sort of sort them um, and prioritize. And then we'll ask everyone's feedback again with the draft strategy, which we're hoping to release for public comment in later later in March next year. So read it, do your online survey results, or if you prefer, you can organise to have a um, chat with Kate or myself or um, any of the colleagues um, at the 
someone that you work with at the Golden Broken CMA. We'd also really appreciate if you could share the insights paper with your networks and have a conversation with someone about it. Um, we're renewing the strategy in a time when it's not possible to meet face to face and have the detailed discussions we'd love to have. Um, so we've set the challenge um, for all involved or interested in NRM in the catchment to have 1001 catchment conversations about the insights paper. These could be conversations with a work colleague, neighbour, family, friend, um, anyone that you think might be interested or previously you um, had a chat about something and it's popped up again here in the insights paper. You don't, as I mentioned, you don't need to read the whole thing and respond to every section, um, just the parts that interest you most. Um, and then once you've had those chats, if you could just capture the important parts um, or points and then just provide it through that online survey, that would be great. Um, that's how we're sort of capturing everything. The final thing um, or way for you to get involved is if your group, business or organisation would like to get involved further. This time, previously we had over 30 organisations, which many of you are online today, um, sign on to the strategy. So we're yeah, keen to take that a step further this time and have groups or organisations make an action pledge to contribute to the implementation of the RCS. So this could be how your own strategy aligns with the RCS or projects you're implementing um, could contribute to its outcomes, or it could even be things that we haven't got funding for or um, quite know what, how we're going to do it, but you are really keen to play a role in that space. So the pledges won't be legally binding or do you have to make a financial commitment, but it's rather just a commitment to act and support the aspirations of the strategy. And we're even thinking, we develop what this action pledge looks like with those that are interested in it, I guess, but potentially it could help um, brand the Goldman Broken um, and maybe get other organisations involved um, and attract more resources for NRM and just get that, I guess, um, help turn a strategy into a document to influencing real life action on the ground. So that's our idea. Um, on our webpage, which the link's in the chat, we've got an expression of interest for any groups or businesses, organisations that want to get involved in the action pledge. If you could register your interest there, we'll then have a conversation with you about what it might look like and um, develop it all together. Um, so that we're hoping for that to occur alongside the drafting of the RCS um, next year. But yeah, um, I think in summary, that's everything. Sorry, I'll get rid of the slides. <laughs> um, Ash, there's just a question there about the timeline deadline for comments on the serve, uh, comments server on the insights paper. Um, so um, it's open until is it mid December that we're um, yeah. So there's plenty of time, I guess, for you not only to have a think yourself, but have a chat chat to other people, and um, you know, don't feel that. Um, you know, one week you might have a chat about something and a thought and you can put that down and the next week you might have another thought and that's fine as well. Um, we, we we want it to be quite um, user friendly. So, um, yeah, we're, it's open for quite some time and we're keen for um, any any thoughts. Um, likewise, as Ash mentioned, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to contact us and just have a have a chat or if you've got a group together that you think are really would be really um, interested in this work and would like to have a chat, we can we can also um, talk about how we could support support that um, feedback. Um, I I guess as many of you online will have done strategies before that um, we'll be relying on um, more than just the the couple of us working on the strategy intensely to actually gather and and pull in as much information uh, as possible. So we hope that there is things within the insights paper that you go, oh, that would be a really good chat for our group to have. Um, we'll, we'll pull that information in. Um, or, oh, there's a bit of information here that actually aligns with a piece of work that we're doing at the moment um, and, and pull that in 
as well. So I guess we're really hoping that there's things within the paper that really can support you in your work as well um, as supporting the development of the RCS. Um, were there any other questions? Pat um, popped in a question about the scale of the RCS and yeah, just reiterating that this is a high level, the RCS is a high level strategic document supported by sub strategies and a, a range of partner strategies as well. So it, it will be quite, quite a high level um, document that we hope clearly articulates the aspirations for natural resource management within our region. Um, were there any other questions? And feel free to just ask um, if you don't want to use the, the chat. Okay. All right. Well, take it that we made sense, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess if you do have a group that you're or within your own organisation that you think this is worthwhile to having a conversation around, but would like some support to do that as well, feel free to, you've got my email from the um, webinar details. So if you just let us know, we can also help you facilitate or present um, at a session. Um, yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks for joining everyone. I'm looking forward to keeping on talking, Martin. Thank you. Thanks all.